Ray Hadley is the Hall of Famer, morning show host on Radio 2GB, 4BC and stations around the country. We have a chance to talk to him every now and then. And so much of it involves energy. There's a lot to talk about, whether it's federally, state-wise, where I reside in New South Wales, where I broadcast to in Queensland, and a lot of it's about power. What about Matt Key? I know that I know that I get really upset when I mention his name. So MK. What about MK? You, the energy you said it. I didn't even bring it up. The, the re, may, may the transcript oh, no. read. Ray oh. Hadley introduced it. That's your fault. Mm. Well, I got there before you did. Anyway, <laughs> the point being this. Matt's decided Araring, the power station that is set to close in 2025, shock horror, should remain open or we may all be living in caves by 2026. Liddell goes this year, in fact it goes next month, and all of a sudden Matt said, hang on a sec, hang on a sec. And furthermore, Chris Minns told my colleague Ben Fordham this morning that he might make sure the coal mines remain open. Now, I hope he's spoken to his federal Energy Minister Chris Bowen about this because that'll come as a shock to poor Chris because he wants to close them all down pronto and rely on wind and, of course, the sun when we know... Look, this isn't about climate change, Paul. Uh, you know, it's not about climate denying. It's about this. Whatever we have when we're long gone in 50 years from now, whether it's nuclear or a combination of hydro and a combination of hydrogen and a whole range of other things, we don't know. We don't know. But I can tell you one thing. If they stop coal-fired power stations in New South Wales and Queensland right now, as I've done in, in Victoria, will all be sitting around in the dark. We'll be cold, of course, in winter and too hot in summer because we won't be able to do it. And I notice Chris Bowen, speaking of him, he's got this wonderful new electric car. Do you think he's Fred Flintstone powering it with his feet? <laughs> it comes from electricity, Chris. You plug it in, old mate. And I'm tipping most of the power you plug it into when you're out of the ACT comes from those dreadful, dreadful things called coal-fired power stations. But also, we are Spring experiencing in New South Wales and in Queensland a bloody hot day, right? So this is peak energy use when everyone's got the AC on. Certainly when it'll be super cold, it'll be, uh, you know, peak energy use as well. So you've got to imagine the system that, would, that, that was there 12 months ago, well, one of the legs has been kicked out of the table, one of the wheels has been taken off the car, and it's not being replaced. And we're being told that even more things will need to drag and access to the electricity network from our cars to our homes to our our factories and they haven't even built enough to replace what we were doing two years ago and Matt and Matt Keane I'm sorry um, it can't hide anywhere because they're the state government that are in the position to have built the replacement technology but they haven't built it instead they're going to introduce a tax as Mark Latham told us last week that's going to be handed on to everyone for the cost of transition I'll take it to the front page of the Australian today uh, the originating chair of the Productivity Commission, Gary Banks. He said a whole range of things about where we're in strife and energy was top of the list. Now, he made this very salient point down the story. He said, at the moment, Russia is bombing the Ukrainian coal-fired power stations. In Australia, we're blowing them up ourselves. I mean, we don't need Russia to invade. We're just blowing them up. We're, you know, figuratively blowing them up by closing them down before we're ready to close them down, which may not be for the next 20 years, for all I know. Unless, so And you think about the technology over the last 10, 15, 20 years. When I started in radio almost 40 years ago, there's a thing as a computer or a mobile phone, old-fashioned Olympus typewriter. And if you were lucky, a two-way. I mean, that's in the space of four decades. Goodness only knows what's going to happen in the next four decades. But we've got to make sure in the interim we have reliable coal fired power. And of course, as you know, we go up to um, Tomago, the aluminium spelter. If they rely upon the batteries they've got in South Australia, they go for eight minutes. Eight minutes they go. <laughs> they need power for 24-7, 365 days a year. Reliable base load power. We all need it. We all need it. And it's, it's just infuriating to think that if you come out with this sort of typical comment, you're a climate denier. It's not no. about denying anything. It's about the practicality of it all. It's about this making is... sure our children and grandchildren can actually survive the next summer, the next winter, and so on for the next decade until we find something else. 
I'm so with you. This is the thing. It's not about climate action. It's about the cost of transition. And the cost of transition is not just financial. It is reliability. It is safety. It is something that you can bet your country on. And we're making the wrong play. And by the way, what about MK? So when he's talking about a coal-fired power station disappearing, it'll be replaced by a giant battery. Mm. Well, last time I checked, you need to charge a battery. So you're getting rid of energy production for energy storage. It's not the same thing. But these people, because... It, because a giant battery gets everyone's head nodding at a dinner party at Malcolm's house, then somehow all of this just... Again, it's well and good just to, to, to get more batteries, but you've got to put stuff into the battery, and that's the problem. I want to get to something else just quickly about New South Wales here. Right, what the right. hell is this state election yeah. about? Like, I remember there, when it was time to get rid of uh, Keneally and the rest of them, well, it was because they stunk to high heaven and they hadn't built anything in the best part of a decade. What is this election about in New South Wales? Probably a race to the bottom. I, I'll tell you what I think might happen in New South Wales. I think it's going to go down to very close, a hung parliament. If Perrottet pulls off the miracle like Morrison did a few years back, it'll be predicated on this, I think. The people in New South Wales look across the Commonwealth, the mainland states and territories, they're all Labor. They look in Canberra, it's Labor. Are they going to really hand government to Chris Minns and Labor and say, well, there we go, we've got Victoria, New South Wales, Queensland, South Australia, the ACT, which is Labor Green, the Northern Territory and WA, all Labor, including the federal government. That may be one of those things that comes into people's mind as they go to the election a little bit later this month, on March 25. They might think, oh, we really want everyone to be Labor right across the Commonwealth. Maybe not. Now, last one, I won't hide it. I was a bit surprised at the response of the news poll that every demographic, every age, every political party supports some of the changes that are happening when it comes to superannuation. You've had plenty of people call you, write letters and no doubt have a chat to you who are nowhere near $3 million in superannuation who have been red hot in the past week, but it didn't seem to turn up in the polls. What's going on? Well, it's very simple. When questioned about this last year, the now Prime Minister and the now Treasurer said we have no intention of changing super. Then all of a sudden, the thought bubble hit them and they thought, oh, here's a way to get some billions back into the budget. We'll slam that 0.5 of 1% who've got 3 million or more in their super. I think the reason that I'm getting kickback from people who don't have 3 million in it, they don't like being misled or lied to. And then you had the uh, Deputy Prime Minister unable on the Today program last Friday to explain it to uh, Carl and to Peter Dutton. I mean, the simple fact of the matter is there's a lot of people in government, in the federal government at the moment, Labor government, who don't understand it. It's something that has to be taken to an election. And the next election will come up in 2025. Make it your platform then. I don't think Albanese will lead us the way Tanya Plibersek's aiming up at the moment. I think she might be the next Prime Minister. We might have a change. We're going to have full -time, a full-term Prime Minister from Albanese. But whoever it may be leading the Labor Party, go to the population in the next election and say, listen, we've got this idea about super and we want to change it. What do you think? And see how they go then.